the president took a bold and decisive action. It was long in coming, frankly. We've been back and forth with Iran for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. And this was not an assassination. This was a lawful killing of a combatant uh, on the battlefield who was responsible for more than 603 American deaths, according to DOD statistics, from his own militias, and thousands of American deaths or injuries by his proxies. And so this guy is a bad dude. We have been in a 40-year twilight war with Iran. Most Americans don't know that. Until the past couple of weeks, most Americans have not heard of KTAB Hezbollah, the um, PMF, the umbrella organization for the militias in Iran. But this is a big part in the 21st century of what we've been combating. Everyone knows Al-Qaeda and the Sunni challenge that we felt, um, fought from terrorists. But Iran is all over the globe. Economic sanctions were having an impact. That's why Iran has been so restive and pushing back and attacking tankers in the Gulf and attacking the Soviet or Soviet, sorry, Saudi Arabian oil infrastructure. And so this is another step where you're taking out a major contributor to this kind of instability in Soleimani. And it's not surprising then that Iran is going to be full of rhetoric and talking about blood in the streets and these sorts of things. So I think it's a continuation of four decades. 40 years of Iranian behavior, and finally we have a U.S. administration that's willing to take uh, this kind of action directly against the regime. Our beef is with the Iranian government, which in my view took the first punch at the United States. You know, we, we talked about that series, that sequence of events that you, you so well laid out, but you forgot to mention that starting in October, through December, there were 11 or 12 rocket attacks against U.S. forces in mm -hmm. Iraq, besides all those other things. So my view is that Iran threw the first punch. So, But we, we also don't want to alienate the Iranian people. We want to punish the regime, because the Iranian people are victims of that Iranian regime and their policies. What's different today is that you have a U.S. administration in place that is actually willing to take action against a regime such as Iran. And, a huge contrast with the appeasement approach taken by the Obama administration. The whole Obama approach towards Iran was an absolute disaster. The Iran nuclear agreement, the JCPOA, is a disaster. And this administration has decided to withdraw from that agreement to take firm action against Iran. Uh, and this is absolutely the right approach. And I think the only language that the Iranian dictatorship un understands is, is strength, determination uh, and, and resolve. We have to project that at every opportunity against uh, what is uh, an extremely barbaric uh, regime with American and British blood on its hands. Those 5,000 are making a big difference. They're continuing the fight against ISIS, mm -hmm. make sure that ISIS does not raise its presence again in either Iraq or Syria. The forces in Iraq are supporting our forces in Syria, and they also help train the Iraqi security forces. I, and this is really important. That's a really, really important point you just made because the critics come after the president and say he's escalating conflict, he's looking for war. And the reality was, is in every one of these engagements, it's Iran who is the aggressor. They strike first, and the U.S. response has been responsible, proportional, and effective. So if anything, Trump's the person who's restraining power, and people are running around saying, you know, we, we, we don't want war. Nobody wants war less than the president, and nobody by his actions has demonstrated he's trying to avoid war and to maintain stability in the region than the president of the United States. The president does not want a war, especially going into a presidential election cycle here in the United States, but he also can't turn a blind eye to the disruption that Iran has caused with global energy markets, their support to um, uh, various terror groups in Syria, uh, the, the uh, mess that is occurring in Yemen uh, as well. So I think the American people actually look to somebody who's decisive. I think the president was very blunt in placing blame with, blame with the previous administration that freed up $150 billion worth of money that wasn't used to improve quality of life in Iran. It was actually used to uh, support various terror groups across the region. This is a meaningless political document intended to embarrass the president. Look, the president has very broad powers as commander in chief under the Constitution to defend the nation. And Congress cannot put limits 
on his decisions and determinations about terrorist threats and how to use the military to respond to them. That's his decision alone. The Constitution does not contemplate Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Adam Schiff uh, as a group of, of commander-in-chief mini-me's who can help uh, make that decision or limit mm -hmm. the president. If you look at census data, look at Bureau of Economic Analysis data, all the government data shows that for decades there has been a flood of people from states like California, Illinois, Connecticut, and New York to much better manage uh, <coughs> governments across Arizona and across Florida. It's no surprise, because if you look at Arizona, you're spending under $4,000 per capita per year right. on state and local government. Compare that to New York, where you're spending nearly $9,000 per capita. It's no surprise people are, are fleeing those high-tax regimes. And it's not just retiring doctors. There's a lot of families.